Hello Internet, how's everybody doing today? This is episode number 24 of my live video tour series. Thank you so much for joining me. As I wait for my live viewers, I guess I'm talking to you on the replay, so thank you for checking this out. Uh, this is the series, if you're not familiar with it, uh, that brings you in real time on the streets of Paris, and in this case on one of the canals of Paris. It's a beautiful day. Hello Heather Jackson, you get the award for being my first live viewer. Great to see your uh, name pop up as long as well as uh, Phyllis Cartwright. Fantastic. Hello everybody. Hello Piggy Mijic. So let's get started, episode number 24. As the title implies, we are doing a, a bit of a canal. It's called the ba La Bassin de la Villette, or Le Bassin de la Villette, excuse me. Uh, that whole ma masculine feminine thing in French. Le Bassin de la Villette, and what we're looking at here is a beautiful structure from uh, 18th century Paris, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Let me just give you the view of the square here at the base of the Bassin. I've got all kinds of beautiful things to show you today. This is a very, very local part of Paris for sure. And on a nice sunny uh, June day like this, people are out and about doing their thing. Before we get to that beautiful rotunda, as it's known as, uh, before we even get to that, let me show you something over here because we're gonna jump right into the details. So hello, welcome everybody. Hello, Christina McNabb. Good to see all those names popping up. All the smileys in the hearts, hello. It's been a couple of weeks now since we've seen each other. I took last weekend off, so thank you for your patience. Thanks for waiting. I think it's gonna be worth the wait today. We're in the 19th arrondissement. And generally, the higher the number of the arrondissement in Paris, the more local it gets, because you're getting further outside of the city, further outside of what we would consider touristy Paris. So you can see part of the elevated uh, metro system there. Oops. I turned off my... <laughs> Technical difficulties here. Let me try to turn on my, my rig again. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Don't know why that happened. My equipment's going on strike. So that's the elevated metro rail uh, railway. Now, before we get over to that square, the start of the Bassin de la Villette, boy, starting off with some beautiful composition right there. Hello, Linda. Joyce Chagar, Terry Chapman, McGilvray. Fantastic. All the all the highlights of my community. Right here, let me, let me show you this. There's a tree. Not all trees are created equal in Paris. This one is known as an arbre remarquable. An arbre remarquable, which means a remarkable tree. And let me show you, there's a, uh, this marble encasing the, the bottom of it. What it says is, in 1945, after the liberation of Paris and the end of World War II, uh, Charles de Gaulle, you know, the hero of the resistance and the liberation of the city, he planted this tree in 1945 in honor of the liberation and in memory of it and all those that lost their lives. So there's a big inscription here that's explaining that. And so this tree has a very special spot planted by Charles de Gaulle himself, a World War II general fighting the Nazis and then later president of France. And despite your political affiliations, uh, you know, de Gaulle was a pretty right-wing right -wing conservative guy, but, um, you know, he did a lot. He's a, he's a major name in the, in the history of the city. So that is a tree unlike most. Definitely want to check that out. It's on the southeastern side of the square when you start walking the Bassin de la Villette, because that's what we're up to today. 130 people live. That's fantastic. I'm motivated. I'm excited. I'm jazzed. Let's get started and go even further into that square. We're north of the Canal Saint-Martin. A, uh, a couple of episodes ago, I did the Canal Saint-Martin, and this is an extension of it. You'll notice there are some names carved in, engraved here in the stones, and I'll point out what those are in a second. Again, 19th arrondissement, Bassin de la Villette, ultra local, very few tourists around. I'm gonna show you some great highlights here. And I think for those of you who are planning to come to Paris in the summer months and the warmer months, I think I might just convince a few of you to, to come up here, way off the beaten track. There's a little market here, promoting something. I didn't even, I didn't even check, didn't even look at the posters today. Bit of a soundtrack for us. So that's the bassin that you see. And we're gonna walk along that a little bit. But behind me, 
I still remember the first day that I saw this when I was walking around and still discovering all these areas. And I thought to myself, wow, I felt like I was far enough from the city center that I wouldn't find any great monuments. But what we have here is part of the barrier that surrounded Paris up until 1860. There was a, a wall, a barrier, and you would pay taxes coming through that wall in, in, into Paris and uh, heavily guarded. And there were several of these that were these pavilions or these sort of stations where they would stop and you'd have to pay the taxes and they would have run administration out of here. And do you remember, can you catch a glimpse of the metro train in the distance there on that elevated line? You guys see that? That metro line, that elevated railway, actually uh, follows the line of that former barrier that up until 1860 was really surrounding the whole city. Interestingly enough, in the 18th century, that barrier and that tax system, it was really, really um, uh, sticking it to the people. And that was one of the contributing factors to the French Revolution. So if you remove this, if you remove the idea of people paying exorbitant taxes to bring goods into Paris, Marie Antoinette probably doesn't lose her head, honestly. Now, this is a special building, and I'm going to show you a bit of the interior. Very special, this um, pavilion, as it were, or this... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? This rotunda. There are only four of them left. Four of them from that old uh, barrier that used to surround the city. So just a real quick glimpse here. There's a really a beautiful uh, restaurant in here. Restaurant and bar. Of course, the World Cup is on TV nonstop right now. Everywhere you go. And I just want to give you a quick look here. Again, we're in an 18th century uh, sort of tax building or a way that they would guard the uh, the border of Paris. And look at that. Sandra Pilcher says she's already loving this tour. Fantastic. Well, there's a composition for us to meditate on. So just some great history here. Again, if I didn't make it clear uh, the first time around, this border around Paris was taxing somebody so heavily. It really was a contributing factor to the French Revolution. Paris expands in 1860. They get rid of this barrier. And areas like Montmartre and Montparnasse and Père Lachaise Cemetery and all of those areas become part of Paris. All right, here we go. Let's do this. I'm feeling the groove. I'm feeling the music. Hello, Karen from California. Thank you for stopping in, saying hi. I got a lot to show you. I actually got to move my buns here because we're going to go all the way down to the end of that water that you see. Hello, Missy Lamb. Super fan. My mom says she's digging the music. I thought you might, Mom. In fact, this is an area that my mom and I have come to before. And uh, my mom's coming back in August. And I think we should do this again, Mom. I think we should come back, back through here. Let me show you the view from here be a little backlit but you get the idea so this is just one of those areas that you feel like you're um, among Parisians at play really you know warm sunny Saturday life is good we're gonna say goodbye to that rotunda and all that history up these stairs for another nice view People waiting in line for a beer. Here we've got a, uh, a patio restaurant slash bar. So there's a lot of that here. I don't know if these people want to be on camera or not, but they are. And then one last look at this. 19th arrondissement, Bassin de la Villette. Life is good on this Saturday afternoon. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Jennifer Warren. I love to see all these names come up of people that I've either toured with in Paris uh, in person or people that I'm planning on touring with. That's pretty great. So as I mentioned earlier on, a couple episodes ago, I did the Canal Saint-Martin, uh, which is a great area south of here. But this is the canal. This is the extension to the north of it. And so you have these little bridges called Passerelle. And there's the canal, so boats are still navigating this area. 
up and down. You can see the lock system where they open to regulate the level of the water so the boats can make it up and down the very steep incline of this canal. And, you know, it's really all integrated into the rest of the city. There's everyday life hustling and bustling all around. Someone asked me if those fountains use wastewater. I don't believe so. I'm not going to go drink in that water anytime soon, but my gut tells me that it's not wastewater, that it's legit. And then on this side is the best sound that we're going to walk along. Speaking of that, let's jump into it. Hey, Alicia McTavish, thanks. Thanks. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Glad that you're happy to be here. So am I. Watch my step on these stairs here. Navigate the crowds. Okay. I said it's time to jump into the walk and Heather is asking me if it's time to jump in the water. No. I don't think I'll be jumping in the water. However, I will show you people who are jumping in the water. That's one of the reasons I wanted to share this walk with you specifically today. What we're coming up on here now, the southern part of the Bassin de la Villette, MK2 is a cinema complex. So along the water here, they actually have two buildings dedicated to the cinema or two, two buildings full of screenings of movies. So you buy your ticket and something that I think is really fantastic is something I'll show you in a second. People here are buying ice cream. Ooh, it's even more crowded here than a couple hours ago when I was here earlier. Try to navigate through all this. Oop. Luckily, I've got an extender on my equipment, so hopefully I can get you all up above the heads. Okay, this is great. So this is the cinema MK2, MK2. Let's say you buy a ticket there and your movie is not being screened in this building, but it's being shown across the way there. That is part two of the cinema. Well, no problem because what they've got right here is a free ferry. <laughs> Let me show it to you more close up. This ferry will literally take you across the river to your movie theater. How great is that? I've always thought that was quite charming. So you buy your ticket, hop on the ferry, pop over and do your thing, watch your movie. Marlene says, somewhere new for me, thanks. I appreciate that, Marlene. You know, what I'm thinking of doing is sharing some of the known places, but also a lot of good stuff that people don't usually see. And as I said, I think I'm going to convince a few of you to walk along this, uh, this waterway next time you're in town, certainly on a warm day. Just north of the uh, cinemas, we've got something that occurs a few different times along the bassin, which is you know, these little petanque fields or petanque arenas as it were Let's see how this guy's doing bravo c'est un point hein? let's see if this guy so you want to get as close as you can to that little ball we'll see if this guy can beat it no oh presque so if you're not familiar with it petanque is a game that migrated up from the south it was the Romans who brought it to to France when they were uh, invading a couple thousand years ago. And now it's uh, a game for hipsters along the waterway here. I really like it. It's a game that doesn't require much skill. Well, it's easy to learn. It requires skill, but it's pretty easy to learn. Now, this is something that I don't, I'm not familiar with. Le Palais Breton. Le Palais Breton, he says. Le Palais Breton. So, <laughs> d'accord. Vous êtes sur Facebook Live en, en ce moment, hein? Parce que ça, c'est, ouais. 200, 200 spectateurs. Uh, Quatre coins du monde. So do you see that? This is I've never seen this before today. They're throwing these really heavy metal coins, and I guess you have to get it on top of the the target there. Ah, merci. So he just handed one to me. So if you make that up. Okay, they're asking me to try. So we're gonna try. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Hello. No, j'ai la cab. Hello. I've, I've got a cameraman now. Yeah. Okay. Comment ça marche? Just, uh, yeah, une technique? Is there a technique? Ah, so he says, hold it like this. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, pas mal, pas mal, hein? Not bad. 
Here we go. Oh! Merci, merci beaucoup. Well, geez, I'm kind of a kind of a natural there. Merci, au revoir. I do not know those people, by the way. They were just cool enough to see me filming. There's something about filming on the streets that I didn't expect, but the Parisians are just really open to it. They're curious about it, and they kind of want to help out. This is another great game. It's called Moki. Moki. It's from Denmark or Sweden or some kind of Norwegian type game. And it's a bit like bowling. You have a big hunk of wood, and you try to knock over these other hunks of wood, and they are numbered, if you can see that. Excuse me, do you see the numbers there? How does he see if he can hit some? Nice. And then you get points according to the, the numbers on the top there. And so you can see there's more of that mulky game here and more pétanque happening there. Pretty fantastic, right? So come on, what's, what's not to love about this area? <laughs> Hello, do you speak, speak English? Yes. A little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Are you Parisian? No. No, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, wow. Do you live here or it's a holiday? Yeah. You live here? Yeah. For how long? Uh, how long here? For... Uh, oui. <laughs> en français? Si vous voulez. Oui, je parle français? Oui? Okay. Combien d'années de, combien tu habites ici? Oh, oui, yeah. um, depuis uh, un an et demi. Okay, so a year and a half. Mieux que qu Afghanistan ou mieux, better than Afghanistan? Oui, yeah. C'est mieux? Oui, c'est mieux. Oui. Okay. okay. Bah, bonne journée, hein? Merci. Bonne glace. <laughs> He's having an ice cream, so I said have a good ice cream. Okay, I want to show you guys this. This is great. This just opened Wednesday. It's free to the public, open every single day. It's swimming. You can literally, we're going to get closer, you can literally swim in the bassin, which has been illegal for a long, long time. But recently they decided, the mayor decided to allow people uh, in the summer to swim. Problem? So I don't want to bother these people, but do you see on the right how it's like a, a beach atmosphere? How great is that? Oui, juste quelques secondes. Il me... Ah, non. Je, je, je lui ai demandé, mais il a dit... Non. D'accord. Ok, ça marche. Ça marche. Ça marche. Ok. okay. All right, so... Ah, excusez-moi. Comment Non, je, je, je parle. Je, je, je m'en vais. Je m'en vais. Non, mais c'est en direct. Je peux pas. Ok, d'accord. Ok, well, they didn't look too kindly on that. I asked one guy and he said yes. <laughs> But uh, the other guy said no, absolutely not. I get it. People are half naked. There are kids here. I just wanted to show you a real quick view, and I think you got it. I'm going to show you again from the bridge. Don't worry. Sometimes it's not enough to ask one worker. Sometimes you got to ask multiple ones and cross-reference cross -reference a little bit. Merci, au revoir. Okay, here we go. Onward. Yeah, it is like a beach in Paris. There's a, a bridge that spans across the water here, so I'm going to cross over and show you guys the other side. That's the glory of the live video. Sometimes you get kicked out of places, but then sometimes you play a, a game with the locals. That's how it works. That's what we like about the live broadcast, isn't it? Yeah, so by the way, that swimming area is free. It's open until 9 p.m. every night through the summer months. And here we go. If you can make it out, there is a, a bridge that's going to span us across, take us across the Blue Bassin, over to the right. Basketball courts, if you can make that out.
here we go. As you can see in front of us, there's a mixture here in this area of a bit of an industrial vibe of, maybe not industrial, but you know, apartment buildings that aren't particularly historic. Okay, so again, without being creepy and weird about it, <laughs> that is the pool. It's pretty great, isn't it? So none of this was here a while ago. I believe it was last year or the year before that they started this. And they decided, you know what, the water is pretty good quality. Just let people swim when it's hot. So there's a beach area, several pools, you know, for kids and different uh, depths. So how great is that? And that way towards the rotunda is where we started today. I'm glad you all like that. This is where we're headed, by the way. That way. Beautiful body of water, to be honest. All those little boats that you see there, I'm gonna explain what those are. Those are actually individuals that you're able to rent a boat and cruise around. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So over 200 of you, in case there are one or two that uh, are first timers, let me show you what I look like and say hello officially. Hi, my name's Corey Fry. I call myself a French fry in Paris. It's the name of my blog my Instagram, my Facebook page. Every week I give you these live free broadcasts in real time on the streets of Paris, different neighborhood, and uh, give you a bit of history. I'm a full-time tour guide uh, and photographer, so I spend my days trying to seek out all of these great little tidbits, cool areas, beautiful views, compositions, and, uh, and history, details. So if in the description of this, is gonna, the replay is gonna go up immediately on Facebook. As always, uh, with every video, the replay will have the description and all the links uh, that you need if you want to follow me on Facebook, follow my blog, if you want to book a tour with me in Paris and see a lot of this stuff firsthand. If you decide you like the sound of my voice and you wouldn't mind it for a couple extra hours, you can book a tour. There's a link there. And then um, also importantly, people support me through Patreon, which is a sort of crowdfunding site. And you can kind of be a subscriber. You can uh, donate each month and get extra Paris content. And I promise I will always send you a lot of extra stuff that I'm not sharing with anybody else. Things like PDF maps of the things that I do so you know exactly where I went on my videos and what I talked about. You can have access to cafe chats because one thing that I'm doing after this video, one thing that I always do, is I do a cafe chat, which is live, a separate broadcast, private, for my Patreon members. So if you become a member for $5 a month or more, you can get access. I always bring a, or usually bring a, a guest, private guest. And uh, this week we got a really great one. It's a bit of a secret for my members, but you know, but you've seen the announcement. Anyway, let me show you the best sign again. Actually, why am I keeping it a secret? The cafe chat today is in an adorable little place that I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. And my guest is a woman who um, is Jewish and came to Paris after the liberation, after the Nazi occupation. And she grew up and born and raised in Paris till she was nine years old. So we're gonna talk about that, what life was like here. I'm sure she's going to give us some interesting insights into that uh, historical period, really the darkest days in Paris, and then the relief and joy and probably uncertainty, really, that followed it. So that'll be the cafe chat. We'll get into that. Right here, this is a company called Marin d'Eau Douce. Marin d'Eau Douce. And what they're doing here is they are renting out electric boats. So here we go. So in the foreground, you have some kids. See, there's a roped off kids section if they want to tool around. And then further back, you can see the white one. You know, adults can just, you don't even need a permit. You don't need anything. You just show up, you pay them, and you can go do it by the hour. You can go out four, five, six hours and just tool around on this, in this waterway, up and down the canal. You cannot do the Canal Saint-Martin. I've read some, uh, some guidebooks that have said that. That's not true. You can't go all that, all that way down as, um, as far south as that, but you can go from the pavilion that we started at the rotunda and you can go all along here by your lonesome or with your family or friends or with an enemy if you want and you can even go beyond that into the next basin so it's called marin d'eau douce you might want to keep that in mind be pretty cool to do a, an interview from one of those boats maybe i'll do that uh, in the future i'll invite a guest and we'll, we'll have a chat while we're tooling around here on the waterway Ah, my wife just showed up. She said hello from your three girls. That's true, I used to have two girls at home. Now I have three. We have a newborn baby who is almost one month old. She'll be one month old tomorrow. 
So hello to all my girls. Hope, hope the two young girls are behaving themselves for mama girl. Okay, so northward again along the Bassin de la Villette. Again, people having a good time on the boats here. Residential apartments along as well. 19th arrondissement. Life is good. That's the bridge we crossed over. Next, I'm going to show you a series of boats that are called Pimiche, which are these anchored boats, often with very interesting and cool stuff happening on top of them. Very windy here. I hope my little pom-pom on my mic is doing the trick and you're not hearing too much wind. For street art fans, I just noticed this a little while ago, actually. Mr. Invader. Bananas. What does it signify? What does it mean? What is it saying about the human condition? No idea, but it's two bananas. And whenever you see that mosaic like that in that style, most likely it's our famous street artist called Invader. I have a hunch. Now, he's anonymous and we don't know who he is, where he lives. Uh, I have a hunch that he at least used to live here or maybe still lives around here. Why? Because I see a lot of his art here, quite a concentration of his earlier pieces. So this is a piniche. This one's called Antipode. And peniches, long story short, it, as far as I know, a French invention where they anchor boats on rivers and canals and they put bars and restaurants and various things, uh, dance clubs. This one has a theater in it. So just think of it as a floating performance space, a floating bar, restaurant. Antipode. And looking at the menu, they have coffee, hot chocolate, fruit juices, salads, desserts. Yeah, why not? They're not going to kick us out, right? Let me just show you real quick what's going on. There you go. How great is that? With the lights. Don't want to bother these people too much, but there you go. Hello, Parisians. Really cool vibe. You know, it's just one of those classic examples. You go to one of these uh, off the beaten track uh, local areas and all of a sudden you walk into these spaces that are just so ultra hip and they're not necessarily trying to be hip, but sometimes the Parisians just pull it off. Uh, this is called uh, Demoiselle. Another restaurant. We're not gonna stop in all of them, but uh, you can see there's actually a series of Piniche. Sometimes uh, they'll have even uh, small musical performances, concerts and things. Oh, this one's this is a bit sad. Look at this banner. It says the Péniche de Demoiselle is condemned to death by the mayor of Paris. It says sign our petition at change.org. So I guess this one is, uh, is threatened. Bonjour. Bonjour. Beautiful view, huh? My goodness. And, you know, it's sunny, but it's not too hot. The summer hasn't gotten too hot yet in Paris, so um, what uh, just an absolute pleasure to be here. Hi, Kathy Brown Hansen. I see your greeting there, and I will throw that greeting right back to you. Hello. Uh, I see a sign for this one, a blues pop jazz concert coming up. And on the left here, another stretch of gravel, which means more matches of pétanque. <laughs> Nobody's in a hurry here, you know. I guess I'm the only one who's in a hurry because I've got a lot to show you. But, you know, it's just that whole thing of, hey, it's Saturday afternoon. We worked our uh, 35 hours, probably more like 17 hours <laughs> this week. And uh, we deserve a break. We deserve to be with our friends and have a beer and chill out and rest up for another week of 17 hours of work. <laughs> uh, I make myself laugh sometimes. Hi, Tim from Houston. Thanks for joining me, buddy. Appreciate it. We are getting to the end of this section of the canal, the Bassin. If you can make it out here, there's a marina. Isn't this gorgeous? Let me just give you the pan here. 
try to get up high for you like this and then pan around. Bassin de la Villette, 19th arrondissement, if you're just joining us. Those girls are having a good time smoking a cigarette, having a beverage. The two buildings we see here at the top of the Bassin. On the left, it's a, a Holiday Inn. It's actually a Holiday Inn Express. So not too shabby, I guess, as far as Holiday Inns go. I mean, if you pop out and you've got all of this going on. And uh, on the right, it's the Pan Am Brewing Company. So they are literally brewing beer over there in that complex. Interesting thing about breweries, um, to brew, the word to brew in French is brasser. And so the places they would brew beer were called les brasseries. So a lot of people ask me, Corey, what's the difference between a cafe and a bistro and a brasserie? Well, the brasserie, the, the name itself, technically means brewery. It's because a lot of those establishments, those eateries, used to be brewing beer downstairs. That is very rarely the case now that they're brewing beer in a brasserie, but that's the origin of that name. Literally means brewery. I have no idea how long we've gone here. Let me check the time. Oh, we're good. Uh, Robert is saying, I thought that the building on the left was some hostels. Well, part of it might be, Robert, but if you can see the, the sign there, it's definitely a Holiday Inn. Cool, we got another soundtrack. Let's follow this guy and get the soundtrack. Here we go. Nice. Hey, Mr. President, what do you say to me? Plans don't change, it's just a policy. But do they know what it means to have a rare system? Nice little musical interlude. The church behind the trees there that I'm going to give you a better view of in a second. Goodbye, soundtrack man. Thank you for your service. Good morning, Lisa, from Washington State. Look at this beauty. Woo! Guarantee you this is a church that almost nobody who visits Paris as a tourist has ever seen. God, I gotta stop. Just stare at my phone screen for a minute there. Look at that, people. Look at the blue sky. Come on. Those beautiful uh, zinc-topped uh, bell towers. Oh my goodness, come on. So this is a church that's called Saint-Jacques Saint-Christophe, St. James and St. Christopher. Let's enjoy another, ooh, there's a gazebo here. Ooh, there's a gazebo. Look at that. Now I know this is a free broadcast, but damn, you're getting your money's worth right now. So am I. <laughs> Kathy Hansen says, I adore your tours. Thank you. Let's go for one more uh, composition. I don't want to get caught filming kids, but look at this uh, gazebo. Look at that beauty. Oh my goodness. What? The ironwork, huh? Can't beat that ironwork. As much as I would love to take you inside this church and spend an extra 30 minutes roaming around, uh, we don't have the time for that today, but 
Saint-Jacques, Saint-Christophe. Check it out, 19th arrondissement. These kids got it made, I tell you. Like, hey, mom, can I go play in the gazebo against the backdrop of that old church? I'm pretty sure that's not how they phrase it when they ask to go play, but. Listen, if you're enjoying these videos today or any other video, you can help me out by sharing it either immediately. You can click on the bottom of your video or on the side and find a way to, to share it to your page. And you, the live broadcast will be on your page. Or you can share the replay. I would really appreciate it. We can grow our little community. Our not-so-little community, really. We're getting near the end. Now, what's going on here? We see these Greek columns with these large iron wheels. This is called the a pont levis and a pont levis it means a, a bridge that is lifted a lifted bridge so this is actually this still functions it's still working today it's actually the only one that's left it's from 1855 and it's quite simple really this section of the street when a boat needs to come through let me show you this is where the the bassin continues through okay a boat coming through there this portion of the street will lift up. Let me show you the seam in the street. You see that? So it's a separate piece. And then these four pillars, all of a sudden those wheels will start, will start cranking. You can see that. And it'll literally lift up this whole portion of the street for the boat to, to cross. Looks kind of like an elevator, doesn't it? Same concept. Interestingly enough, this is by a company called Otis, an American company called Otis, and they were all the rage in the 19th century. Still today, everywhere around the world, you can find Otis elevators, and they were uh, notably the company that won the contest to put the Eiffel Tower elevators in. So that's a great vestige, a great leftover. I almost got hit by a bike. Earlier, it was me on a bike almost hitting pedestrians, and now it's the other way around. That's where we came from. And I'm going to show you one last spot. And we're going to do our uh, a little private cafe chat for my Patreon people, affectionately known as the Freets. Why Freets? Because I call myself, I call myself a French fry in Paris, hence uh, the Freets. My last name's Fry. Call myself a French fry in Paris. I still can't tell if that's corny or brilliant, but I did it many, many years ago and it stuck. <laughs> Someone's saying bonjour from India. Hello. Hello from India. That's fantastic. Okay, one last spot. This is where we're going to do the cafe chat with uh, my guest. Where we're going to talk about what it was like to grow up in post-war Paris once the Nazis uh, got kicked out and they started the rebuilding. It's going to be an interesting chat indeed. And we're going to answer some of the questions that my subscribers have sent in. Hi, Amy Harden. This is the brewery, Pan Am Brewery. Okay, so this last location is really uh, special. It's very hip. It's cool. It's sexy. It's called Le Pavillon des Canaux. So this is the front. They've got this kind of new veranda, sort of winter garden vibe going on. Look at this. And then, what it is, it's actually an old uh, house that was part of a stable system. So there used to be horse stables. Let me show you. They would have horse stables in this area, you know, they're pulling around all of the taxis and the buses of the 19th century. And this was a little house attached to it where uh, I assume they were managing the stable. It's called Le Pavillon des Canaux. And let me show you the interiors real quick, as long as my uh, cell service holds up. I think you're gonna like this. It's set up to be like a, a little home, a little cottage home inside. Let's see 
the vibe. Yeah, this is where my mom and I ate one day. Little stove that they've decorated. This is how great is it? I mean, it's just super cozy. I'm gonna head upstairs now and show you that. Look at these stairs. Okay, so there's a lot to see up here. First, this room. How fun is this? Really cute. So you can come here, you can grab lunch, you can grab a drink, you can just bring your laptop and work. A lot of people use this as a sort of co-working space. Like I said, I, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna convince a few of you to come see this area, this part of Paris, when you come through. Look at this bedroom. So this is a cafe restaurant. <laughs> this isn't someone's home. This isn't a museum. This is called Le Pavillon des Canaux. Again, if you become a Patreon member, um, you can get a PDF map of my walks and you'll see exactly where this is. You'll see the name and uh, you'll see the caption of exactly what I said about it. So you can remember how to find it and why it's interesting. There's a canal there. Let me show you what's up, up top here. It's the kind of place where you shouldn't even come in and order your food or your coffee. You should first walk around for a good 15 minutes, photograph everything. I really like this room. Look at that green, it's beautiful. I thought this would be a good way to uh, finish the walk. A nice sort of final hurrah. Let me show you what's again up on the ceiling. These girls are having a good time. Yeah. So you just pull up a couple of chairs and you have a view of the water. It's great. This is, if you can see, actually looking through into the kitchen. Nice little uh, piece of artwork there. So that looks into the kitchen. Let me show you the kitchen. Oh, also, looking up from here, I'm gonna show you every bit of this. It's sort of an attic loft space, which I don't even know if you can access this, but that's quite nice, isn't it? Just adds another layer. Let me show you the kitchen. Well, it's not being used as a kitchen, it's literally just another room, another dining area, another place to sip your cappuccino. I mean, you just gotta love it. Of these places where people, clearly there's so much intent, there's so much pride and so much thoughtfulness behind everything. And you know, they create places that you'd actually give a damn about, places that you'd want to stay in. While away the hours. Lastly, I want to show you the bathroom. The bathroom is pretty iconic. Oh, we'll, let, we'll, we'll let this girl leave. There we go. Here's the bathroom. It's almost like walking through a, like a bed, bath, and beyond or something but 10 times better. Look at this, this is one of the, the big selling points of Le Pavillon de, Ca de Cano. Bathtub. So you literally come here, set your coffee, your laptop right there, and, and do your thing, and just work. I don't know how much work you'd get done, honestly, but if you, I don't know if you got a, a novel to write or a blog post to do, or a PDF map to make, you're pretty good. This is the shower. I'm going to go to the 
Changing station. I could use that when I've got my, my girls with me. Sink. Okay. So pretty great way to end this. So this is, again, the Pavillon des Canaux, and it's at the northern part of the Bassin de la Villette. Here's a little staircase that looks like it's going up into this loft area. But it's off limits to us. Yeah, the bathroom's great, isn't it? All right, I think that's it. So let me go back outside and we'll sign off. Good music, too. Look at that light. Oh, there she is. That is my cafe chat guest. Hello, Elizabeth. I'll be with you in two, two minutes. Two minutes, I'm coming. That's Elizabeth, and she is going to be my guest for the cafe chat. Let me give you one last view. Without falling into the bassin. Here we go. There it is. Put this one on your list. Put this whole area on your list, frankly. One last look at the Bassin de la Villette, 19th arrondissement. And I want to thank you all. I'm going to sign off now. For those of you who are a Patreon subscriber, you can go into our private uh, cafe chat group on Facebook. And I'm going to, in about five minutes, be broadcasting a live chat with Elizabeth Diamond. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a lovely Saturday or Sunday morning if you're over uh, down under. And I want to thank you so much. Remember, check out all the links. The replay will be here on Facebook. And, uh, you know follow me let's be friends which is what i think i said in the very first episode 24 25 videos ago let's be friends i know a lot of us already are take care everybody hope you enjoy this one share this with your friends spread the word let's grow this community and i will see you next weekend for another live walk remember if you can't bring yourself to paris i'm going to bring paris to you i'll catch you on the next one take care bye